Hey guys, welcome back to American Nostalgia Garage. So what are we doing today? I don't, I don't know anymore. I give up. Uh, we gotta pull this engine back out because that's what you do when you put cars together. So this engine's gotta come back out. Uh, I'll show you, there's a good reason for that. I'll show you later. Um, but this engine and transmission have to come back out uh why i forget i don't know they have to come out back out we have to install some new parts um we have to final assemble some of the stuff on the engine um and then i i want to make sure that that engine runs because uh, i don't know if it does uh the last time that we ran it uh i broke it so uh and as you saw on probably another video here i d tried to diagnose it and, and we didn't find anything wrong with it so that's a good thing, a bad thing, I don't really know, but that engine's got to come out. Um, we're going to make room for some other stuff. And then, uh, I guess let's get started. Now that that's out, we are going to pull the transmission off. Before we touch anything, before we do anything else, we are going to dial indicate the bell housing because we haven't done that yet. And uh, that really, really needs to get done. So. All right, well, now we have the bell housing accessible and covered in crap. So the goal here is getting, I don't know if you can see it, getting that uh, pilot bearing to be perfectly centric in this hole. Why? Because the transmission mounts centrically in this hole and the shaft is supposed to be perfectly centered with that if that input shaft on the transmission is off centered it's going to do this inside now i'm exaggerating but it's going to do this inside the the transmission inside the engine uh, which will mess everything up so we need to make sure that that's straight uh, i have been kind of waiting on doing this uh, because we did just install the engine in a prior video just so we can mock things up and get the tunnel built, which is done now. So now we've got to back up a couple steps to go forward a couple steps. So let's do it. All right, here we are doing a thing I've been really, really excited to do. As you can tell by precision my measuring instruments that I'm, you always see me using because I always, always like precision. So now we have to do something. Actually, it's really important. So what we're gonna do, like I explained already, is we're gonna make sure that this hole and these mounting bolts correspond with making sure that the input shaft is directly in the center of our pilot bushing inside the crank without wobbling at all. So how am I gonna do that, right? So if you notice, I already set this up. That's because I don't wanna look like an idiot on the film. 
I think I do a good enough job looking like an idiot uh, on camera to you guys without any of the extra stuff. Putting this dial indicator on here was a huge pain in the ass. Um, why? Because I couldn't get both of my lobster claws into this thing, into this bell housing to tighten little bolts that are in here because I don't have the right piece of equipment. So anyway, what are we going to do? We're going to use the dial indicator to basically measure what the variance is from what we created as a zero point. I don't know if you can read that. That's on zero. So I created that zero as a starting point. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do a, a reading at, well, we're, we'll do it at our 12 o'clock here. I'm going to do a reading of variance at our three, at our six, and at our nine. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how different those measurements are from each other. And that's going to tell me how far this way, or this way, or this way, or that way, or whatever this is actually facing. So what I'm going to do is go get a marker. And I'm going to make sure to get one that basically doesn't have any ink in it. And this is our zero. So that's zero on our dial indicator. So what my lovely assistant is going to do is he's going to turn it over. We'll turn it over clockwise because uh, that's the way it's, it spins over anyway. So he's going to turn it over clockwise, give me 90 degrees, and then I'm going to get a measurement. Okay. I'm going to turn it really slowly without shaking the motor so you guys can see the dial indicator the whole time. So just keep that in mind when I start turning it. That's not going to happen. Nope, not at all. Ready? Go ahead. Now the bonus to doing this on an engine hoist is that the whole thing spins around and makes you look like an idiot. That's good. You don't want a little bit far. Go back just a, a tad. That's good. Now these don't actually have to be exact. You don't have to do it at exactly 90 degrees, um, but you do want to do it at exact opposites. So I could have done it here, you know, over here, but if I did it here, then I'd want to do it here because there's no point in getting a reference from here to say over here, that's not gonna give you anything. So what are we at? Now the only reason I'm doing this is just to save myself from having to turn it over 800 times or save Ryan from having to do it. You know, if the input shaft comes through the floorboard like a shish kebab, then you know that we were off by just a little bit. Yeah, to take it back out. And that's fine. So the just right. is needed. We're going to turn it uh, another 90 degrees, see what we got. A little more. Oh, go back a little bit. All right, that's good. All right, so now this is what's important. This number, it, although that's really high compared to zero, we're not really worried about the, the, the large number. We're worried about that large number versus what number we're gonna get over here. So to explain what I mean, we got a zero here. Well, we didn't get a zero, I set that as zero. Now here at 90, all right, I should say at our, at our six o'clock, which is 180 degrees from here, which is gonna show us how up and down, how out of, out of round the up and down is of this bell housing in regards to, in re relation to our uh, pilot bushing. This was at zero, meaning that we were, you know, a, st a starting point. Now I'm reading 14 thousandths. So this bell housing is 14 thousandths down but I can't do anything with that yet because I don't know how much shifted in the say uh, the x-axis it is I know that in the y-axis I need to go up approximately seven thousandths in order to get it centered but I don't know what I have to do left and right so I can't do anything just yet so now we're going to turn it another 90 degrees and get our measurement here and then compare it to that one so Ryan's going to do that again. A little more. Like a... 
right there. All right, so what do we got here? Thirty-six. So that's a big difference. Thirty-six, twenty thousandths. So I need basically this bell housing now is was that twenty-nine? Twenty-nine thousandths this direction. Now how am I going to get that? That's going to be tough. Uh, we're going to have to try a series of uh, offset bushings or offset. Uh, dowels for the transmission. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then we're going to retest. So basically right now, the way that this is bolted in, our bell housing is down some and left a lot. So it's down 7,000 is too much. And it's to your well, that direction, whatever. Uh, Twenty-nine thousandths, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do math. Um, what we are going to do is go through these measurements one more time just to make sure, and then, uh, and then we're going to have to knock out some dowel uh, transmission dowels and uh, retest. All right. So this is why we check, double check, because sometimes just moving the gauge, touching it, whatever, uh, you can get some variations in readings we're going to go through it one more time just to make sure but the second time we didn't get 65 we got 59 and then we got 36 coming back around to it so 36 is correct but that original 65 was not this is what happens when you're doing it in the garage you got maybe not the right tool uh, you know maybe your whole brain doesn't work maybe not the right people yeah maybe you get some different people to do this uh so we're going to go back around uh Remeasure this one one more time, remeasure this one one more time, and then we're going to do our tops and bottoms one more time. All right, so we did recheck. Uh, it's basically ballpark to what we said. We've got to go, uh, what was it? There was a 23 thousandths difference in left to right. So that means that the bell housing is approximately, uh, what was that, 11 and a half? Yeah. It's approximately 11 and a half uh, thousandths. Uh, in this direction, and we got 13 thousandths or so against our one up here. So that means that the bell housing is also six or seven thousandths down. So what we've got to do is we've kind of got to go like this way. We've got to sort of go maybe even a little bit more like this. So how are we going to do that? Sort of brushed on that. Offset dowels. Now, uh, the way these are made is that, make sure I drop all the little pieces on the floor. Instructions, who the hell knows those? The way that these are done is that they're actually ground like, sort of like, you know, you're not going to see it on the camera, but they're ground like how a camshaft is ground, where they're actually ground, uh, with an, kind of in, in an ellipse, not a, per, a perfect circle. Um, so the, basically the, what's going to happen is from center, these dowels will give me 14 uh, thousandths of offset. Now I don't need 14 thousandths anywhere. What I need is, uh, what did I say? Let me mark it down so I don't have to do this 30 times. What I need is roughly 11 this way, 11 and a half, whatever. It's, we're not going to get halves because um, I don't know anything about precision. We need to go 11 and a half thousandths that way, and we need to go six thousandths this way down. So you, we can't do two different things. We, we're not going to be able to do down and, uh, well, we are, but we're going to do it as we're going to aim the ellipse, elliptical part. So if my dowel looks just, say, like this, I'm going to aim the, if this is the perfect circle, oh, my God, if that's a perfect circle, I'm going to aim the part that's out around in the direction I want to go. Uh, which is why, like I said, we want to go a little down and a lot sideways. So we're going to kind of aim these. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up the bell housing bolts, knock the old bell, uh, dowels out, and put the new ones in. Also, sorry YouTube and whoever else cares. I was listening to my Christmas music and I totally forgot that I was still recording. 
All right, it's 14 years later. Uh, I don't know if you can tell because I grew a mustache. Is that dirt? I have a dirty mustache. Anyway, we had to measure a bunch of times. We noticed that our the arms of our gauge were touching the bell housing. Then we noticed the pintle, the spring-loaded pintle on the other side was touching the bell housing. Then we noticed we were turning it and the, the pintle on the bottom, the measuring stick thing, wasn't touching the bell. It would like come off the bell housing and not touch the bell housing anymore. Um, but we finally got a good, we had to tell, this is, I don't know, an hour of going back and forth. Um, but we finally got it. We had to turn the, the uh, dowels a couple times. Anyway, so here's what we ended up with. We ended up with four and a half thousandths this way and four and a half thousandths this way. So we're right in spec. I think spec is like five to eight or something like that, uh, or five to ten. I don't, I don't really know. But uh, I know at four and a half, that's as close as we're going to get, and we're pretty much spot on. So I'll show you what we had to do with that. If you look, we had to aim. You see the angle of the flat there? This side of the flat is where the high spot on this dowel pin is. So we had to aim that high spot to where we, actually, excuse me, the high spot is on this side uh, it, to pull the, the bell housing in this direction, which, because it was originally too far in that direction. So anyway, we've got it aimed to basically give us our, this one too, and it gives us, I mean, the measurements are not going to mean anything to you because you weren't here for the ridiculousness. But anyway, it's it's done. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to drill. There's little set screws that they want you to put in here so that these don't come out and so that you never, ever, 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 ever have to do this again. And right now, I am going to... I'm going to set that up so that we they don't ever come out. All right, now we're going to install these little uh, set screws so that these things don't walk right back out. First, you got to drill a little hole. All right. Let's check that just to make sure that I'm in there. And I am. So now I'm going to run a tap in there. 832. I didn't pick this at random. That's what the set screws are, and that's what, what is it, Moroso, or whoever these are, tell you to do. So we'll just tap this little hole for 832 so we can run our set screw in there. All right, now we got our hole for our set screw. Nice. Now we got to put our get our set screw and run that in. After what is that? Six minutes and thirty-eight seconds of me looking for this Allen key, I found it. I also put some uh, thread locker on this little uh, set screw. So now we're gonna thread that in. Make sure to over torque it so it snaps off. It doesn't help you at all. Done. Now I'm gonna actually put this back. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I'm not. Well, I don't know if you can tell I am wearing different clothes. So, yeah, it's a couple uh, days. No, it's actually a couple weeks later. Uh, maybe two. It's not so bad. But it's not the same day. I can tell you that. I am a lazy, lazy man. Anyway, we got the engine on the floor here. That engine has to go on a stand for us to do some other stuff. So that's what we're going to do now. If we want to move on with this, it's got to go on a stand. So I do not want to go through the whole debacle of getting the engine hoist in here and doing all that. Because that means I got to move the blue car and 
You can see the blue car's in here. There's no way I'm getting an engine hoist around this. So I've got to get creative. So I guess you can watch. All right, let me give you a glimpse of uh, this sketch level we're at today, which uh pretty high, I mean, in comparison to normal. So this is my setup here for the engine hoist. I got some grade uh, negative one ball thread. Yeah, probably grade negative one uh, nuts. Stacked a whole bunch of nuts on here because it needed to be spaced, spaced out. I left all of these loose. I mean, this is like sketch level DEFCON 6. Uh, this is even sketchier than my normal, which is uh, pretty much life-threatening to say the least. Then, uh, like I said, we have an engine hoist problem. So what I did is I just took a, a chain, which I was too lazy to even remove from the bag. I threw it over the lift. Look at the safety level here, so it can't slip. I mean, we do things safely in this garage. Threw it in the back of the head, front of the head over there, and uh, I'm just gonna use the lift to lift this up because uh, I think it's easy. Like that you could uh, build a death trap that uh, just be honest more likely than not I'm gonna come back in here whenever this will be laying on the ground super cool also I'm out of breath so I probably should be waited to record this part of the video because I'm probably gonna throw it anyway I think uh, we're gonna clip the video here I don't really have the energy to do anymore and uh, you know, I want to keep this leg on my body a little bit longer. And I don't think this, uh, this setup is conducive to me keeping the leg. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed watching me struggle with this, or if you guys just enjoyed the video, throw me a like. If you guys could subscribe to my channel, keep an eye out for, you know, upcoming videos. I'm trying to put out stuff that people enjoy watching, or that I would enjoy watching. I'm going to be having upcoming videos on assembling this engine and seeing if it's going to run at all. And then uh, eventually it's going to go in the, uh, the blue car. So, like I said, if you guys could like, subscribe to the channel, keep an eye out for new videos, and uh, I'll see you guys later.